Hello and today uh, I'm just taking a look at the new version of the SSL 360 software which I think is version 1.1 that has the uh, channel strips uh, layout that you can see in front of you now uh, and specifically um, we're looking at whether it's viable to use it with a touchscreen or not. So let's jump straight in and I'll start twiddling some of these knobs for you. You can see how it works. It's pretty straightforward any time you've got access to the whole screen it does highlight which particular channel strip you're working with um, you can move the screen up and down and it's reasonably easy to target and hit the mark of whatever you're looking at but occasionally you'll see what happened then is I lifted the screen um, which wasn't my intention I went straight onto the mixer um, there is an option to zoom in on the right here which gives you a little, it makes it all a little bit easier and you can see exactly what you're doing and you also get uh, you can see there that it gives me um, the actual reading which is quite nice and I think um, if I was using this on a regular basis and I don't know yet whether I will or not um, I can talk about that later on there's reasons why personally I wouldn't I wouldn't mainly probably around the number of UF8 uh, devices I have I only have the one um, which limits me to eight tracks. Yes, I can bank up and down, but I, I have got used to having um, 16 or, or narrow 24 tracks all laid out in front of me, which I quite like. Um, but that's by the by. Um, a little bit of background, actually. Let's go straight back out. Is I've got, as I, I can't remember what I mentioned, I've got channel strip on every track there in um, FL Studio. Let me just bring FL Studio up. And you can see along here I've got channel strips on every track on track one and on these first three I've also got uh, compressors um, I can go in I'll do it with a mouse actually because it's a little bit more straightforward and bring up the actual uh, plugins so I've got the channel strip there and I've got Oh, I was looking for my bass plug and it's, just, it's actually come up on a different screen. It tends to remember where you had it last and for some reason I had it on uh, a different screen. Um, from yesterday's video you can see that uh, anything you do here is going to be reflected um, in the main mixer. And you kind of, it's a bit of horses for courses, but what you're actually gaining is you're going to, instead of getting this kind of thing, where you've got loads of channel strips coming up um, you can see the whole thing all at once which is obviously the idea and it, it makes um, working uh, a lot more intuitive and a lot more straightforward um, there's less distractions so um, I can see what I've done it why they've done it and it, it's great um, similar in some ways in, in to console one and what, and what they've done um, but I do like having this layout and uh, obviously um, although I was around in the 80s I didn't have an SSL console and now I kind of feel that maybe I do which is quite nice um, okay uh, moving on from that um, let me just quickly run through the left hand side options here I've already shown you um, we've got the zoom in and zoom out um, oh the other thing is if you've got if you've got a lot of tracks soloed and you can see I'm switching a lot of these tracks over to solo and maybe I've got track up here track 48 or something I don't know soloed you can switch them all off in one go with a solo button there um, this will show you the compressor or hide the compressor and you can see I've got compressor on the first three tracks drums percussion and bass and whichever tracks you load up in your door um, will appear on this right hand side and you can scroll up and down on this depending on how many you've got loaded um, you're then into I think probably you probably know what these are already that's the home screen this is what we're looking at now solo I've shown you zoom I've shown you settings is specific to um, the plugins um, I fiddled around a bit with the mouse wheel but um, I didn't like having that on 
personally. Um, and obviously if you're using a touch screen it's probably a little bit redundant. And those are your settings for your soft keys and quick keys and so on. And that's the basics of what I wanted to show as far as the touch screen goes. So I hope that's been useful. Um, my takeaway is as long as you've got a screen that's large enough, um, and I'm lucky with this one, what I found is that funny enough with when COVID came on, these screens, um, which are X industry, um, suddenly became quite cheap on the second hand market. And I, I picked up this one um, very cheaply. And it's uh, quite a high spec 1080p monitor, uh, but quite a high spec industrial touchscreen monitor. Um, so I've been quite pleased. I do like touchscreens. I must admit, I tend to use the control surface most of the time now. And if I'm sitting down, um, if I've got a touchscreen in front of me, I want it to be right at my hands. And where I have this now, um, I have to kind of reach out quite a bit from a sitting position. And to be honest, um, I'd probably have to think about reconfiguring things if I was going to be using this on a regular basis. And that's something I might do. Um, but I'll be honest with you, at the moment, um, I've got a good setup with the Icon Qcon Pro X and I've got 24 tracks. Um, and I do like the, the uh, Micron Qcon Pro X. It has a twin screens and it has a real um, good um, mix of feel to it. Um, so horses for courses. I think what might swing it for me is if I had the UC1 and another um, uh, UF8 device, perhaps two more UF8 devices ideally, then uh, yeah, I could I could see me going down that road, but um, at the end of the day, um, I'm probably like a lot of people get distracted by the technology. Um, I I've got an IT background, um, and I sometimes have to say, look, Ian, you're trying to focus on the music. Just get on and focus on the music. Um, having said that, uh, what I have found, and now I'm I'm just blabbering, so you can switch off now <laughs> if you don't want to listen is um, I'll do like a week's worth of quite intensive music and get to a point where I'm reasonably happy and then I'll spend a week um, coding. Um, I've done a bit of coding around the UF8 just to make it a bit tidier in FL Studio and I've done um, a lot more coding around some of the other doors, um, specifically the Icon Qcon Pro X but also Behringer X Touch and some other devices um, with FL Studio just to really tidy things up and get them working how I want. Um, and I'll maybe do that for a week, get a bit fed up with that, go back to music, and I find it's like going back to something anew, and suddenly I have all the fresh ideas um, that I, I think I might have been getting to a point where my brain was full enough. Anyway, um, I've digressed and gone completely off topic. Um, this is really about touchscreen, so just to summarise, um, yes, it works well with a touchscreen, provided your touchscreen is large enough. Um, if you've got a smaller touchscreen, you can zoom in, and that's actually a nicer way of working anyway. Uh, even on a screen this size, which is 42 inch, um, I think I would probably use that zoom key because I like to see the values um, as well as the the, uh, the pots showing me where I am. Um, does it really matter? No, it's just personal preference. Can you do it with a mouse? Yes, but it's a little bit more grief. Um, oh, one thing that I would mention was um, in terms of selecting tracks, I'm just going to select a load of tracks now on the UF8 and they will be reflected in um, straight away in FL Studio. It doesn't have an immediate impact on what I'm looking at here. Um, and the reason I think is that this is very much based on um, the current track that you're working on as far as the controls are concerned. So if I was to jump into FL Studio and open up, um, say, the compression, compression plugin, um, then that's the track I'm working on. And it doesn't really matter what else I look at because I can see the whole lot here. So perhaps not the clearest um, communication of what's going on, but it, it kind of does make sense to me the way that they've got it uh, set up and I like it. Um, okay, that's pretty much it. I've waffled enough. Um, thanks very much for your time. See you again soon, I hope.